So we're going to show off tonight's deck, and we're going to have some fun shenanigans. So this is a best of one deck, so I call it the One Punch Slime. Cue One, one Punch Man reference here. <laughs> Now, between you and me, I only one watched one show, pretty much one episode of the show. I still need to catch up with the series. But basic premise is we're going to try to do an OTK around Slowbrook, the Overslime, a free mana free free legendary creature ooze. It adds trample, one of our land cards put into your graveyard from any well, put a plus one plus one counter on Slowbrook, the Overslime. Then it has an ability that we can remove free counters from it to return it to our hand. When Slowbrook leads the battlefield, whether through death, exile, etc., etc., Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. Very nifty ability. But the basic premise is what we're going to try to do is make Slowgurk into a really, really big creature since it has trample and try to swing it for lethal. So how are we going to do that? Well, basic premise is we're actually running a combo called the Hero Unites the Elves Moride of the Frost combo. For those who don't know what the combo is, let me elaborate. Technically, Hero Unites the Elves, pretty powerful saga. Four mana when you mill three cards, and you may put an elf card or timer card from your graveyard to the battlefield. We're primarily doing it for the first step. The second, third step, we don't have any elves in the deck, so it doesn't work, so why are we doing this? Well, that's because it actually combos with Morite the Frost, which is a changeling, but that's also an elf. So the basic combo is you have to at least get two of these in your graveyard. You play Herod Unites the Elves. You return Morite. Morite, then you make a copy of to clarify for those who don't know, Morite the Foss, a 5 mana 0-0, zero, zero, but you may have this into the battlefield as a copy of a permanent you control, except it's a legendary, that's important, and snow in addition to its other types, and it's a creature it enters with two additional plus one plus one counters on it. So, the basic, and it also has Changeling too if you want that, but the basic premise is we're going to make it a copy of Herald Unites the Elves, do the same mill effect, and then return the second Morite, and then copy Herald Unites the Elves. Thanks to the combo, one of these will have to sacrifice itself because of the legendary rule. So it goes to the graveyard, and then this saga trigger will go off of the one that just got into the battlefield. We return the one that just went to the graveyard, back onto the battlefield, as Herald unites the elves. Do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, till the point that we build a high portion of cards, hopefully a high portion of land cards, and make this into a ridiculously big slime and swing it for lethal. Now, for this deck to work, I did throw some other tools in here to try to keep it a little bit consistent, as well as just some fun little one ofs So, we do need to find some ways to mill cards into our graveyard. In that case, we have Death Bond Sprout. Just a really good 1 mana 1 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, you mill a card, then there's free more cards. You can turn it into a free free. We're primarily playing it because it mills, which is nice. But giving it the ability to essentially be able to become a free free that can grow bigger, very, very nice. We also have cards like Covetous Castaway, which essentially when it dies, mills free cards, but mostly we're doing it for that, as well as it's a card that we don't mind milling, because then we can cast it for Ghostly Cascader, which then allows us to shuffle up the free target cards from our graveyard to the library when it enters the battlefield. So like if there's any nifty tech cards that are in this list that we'd rather shuffle back in that we play, we use the Ghostly Cascader for that. We also use Suspicious Stowaway as a semi-draw mill piece, essentially. This is if we have the weird situation, like we have a Moride of the Frost in hand, we already have one in the graveyard, we need to get into the graveyard. Suspicious Stowaway, just a way to be unblockable, and we can just swing in, draw a card, discard a card. Very nifty. Plus, it's also used for a backup plan, which we'll talk about in a quick second. Also, Widowbroom Command, just a very versatile command, but also one of the modes is starting to play in Mills Free Cards, aka it's going to be us, and then we can return a land card from our graveyard to our hand. Hey, very nifty, since returning a land card to our hand would be nice because it, it combos with Slowgurk. Very, very nice. Well, not Slowgurk, it actually combos more with Will of Guys, but you get what I'm saying. We can get a land, maybe we can discard it with that. There's like little synergies like that. Plus, also the other modes on it just are very nice, destroying a problematic uh, band of value to our less non-land, non-creature permanent, making a creature get negative three, negative one, or even just using it as a life drain spell, essentially. Then we also have Egon God of Death as a two of in the list. This is another good mill engine. We're mostly going to be playing it on the Throne of Death, just being able to, at the beginning of our upkeep, mill card. Very, very nice. Sorry about the noise there. 
And then being able to exile a creature card from a graveyard to draw a card. Very, very nice. Graveyard Trespasser, not really a mill piece, so we'll go on to the next card that's a mill piece. Then we have Narfi's Keen Betrayal. This is also a pretty fun one because it allows us to uh, both me and the opponent mill four cards. And then we may exile a creature or a placewalker card from each graveyard. This is very nifty because we can steal some creatures that are nifty from our opponent, as well as maybe set up for our combo, like maybe we can exile a Morite and then be able to cast it like on the following turn if we have a Herald Unite the Elves or any of our quote-unquote combo pieces. Stuff like that, essentially. Then we already talked about Slogurk. We also, that's pretty much the whole mill strategy. So now with the mill strategy, we do have to have cards that can synergize with our game plan as well as just essentially maybe can be a finisher as well. So we throw in Willow Geist in here. This also is kind of our secondary slow grip in the deck because it's a 1-1 with Trample. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then when it dies, you gain life equal to its power. Well, with this whole Carol Unites the Elves, more right of the Frost combo, what you're essentially going to be doing is you're going to be constantly getting a card from your graveyard to the battlefield, which in this case triggers Willow Geist's ability, so this will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, kind of like how Slow Girk is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's one of our threats. Another one's Graveyard Trespasser, just a very efficient threat, to be honest. It's Graveyard Hate against our opponent, makes him drain. That can help us get into a range to attack with a lethal Slow Girk. Very nice card. We also are running Ludovic and Suspicious Stowaway, but Ludovic here is kind of a main little sneaky card in the deck. It also is a mill engine as well, but we're primarily pairing it for Olog. Pretty much if we pay the activated ability of two blue, two black, and then X, and then exile X creature cards from our graveyard, we can transform Ludovic into Olag. And what Olag is, it's going to be a 4-4 legendary creature zombie that is going to be a copy of a creature we exile of it, and it's going to enter with X counters on it equal to how much creatures we exile with the activated ability. So, this is kind of our secret little finisher if we can't get Slow Grip or Willow Geist to work, because we can exile a lot of creature cards in the graveyard, make a ridiculously big threat, like for example a Suspicious Stowaway, and just make like a ridiculously like a 5-5-6-6 five, five, six, six, or 8-8 eight, eight, like unblockable that can swing in for lethal. So, very, very nice. Then we also are running stuff essentially like Gelatinous Cube as removal in our list, just because honestly it's more for flavor than anything else. But it's a nice card, just being able to temporary exile a creature card, exile like a big creature that's probably preventing us to attack in with our stuff. Very, very nice. We're also running the Meat Heart Massacre as unconditional removal, as well as a board wipe. And it's kind of one of those insurances with our creatures and such, because if our creatures die, then we'll at least gain life from it and make our opponent lose life. We, Well, vice versa, you know what I mean. Essentially, if we lose any of our creatures, they lose life. If we make them lose any of their creatures, we gain life. And then, pretty much, we have one Balagad Recovery in here, just a way to return our combo pieces, as well as one Hagra Mauling, just to essentially as unconditional removal against the really annoying lands, which we also, like, man lands, essentially, which we have two of in this list, Harl the Stall of Giants, as well as Lair of the Hydra. And then we have two Field of Ruins, essentially, for land hate against the man lands. But then that leads us to our mana base, which is, as stated before, Harl the Storm Giants, two islands, three swamps, one forest, one lair of the Hydra, four clear water, murk water pathways, four dark boar, as well as slitter boar pathways, four bark channel and tide channel pathways, the world tree, and field of ruin. Honestly, one other land I could actually put in here, now I'm coming to think of it, is you could technically put in the blue black uh, chill land, essentially, from this cycle. You could definitely do that, I'm not going to lie, I was even considering it, but I did kind of want to have at least, you know what, actually I kind of convinced myself, we're going to throw at least two of these in here, and then just cut down to one, and then cut down to like that. Mostly the reason why I was being a little finicky is because we had the pathways in here, so I wanted to be a little bit cautious of that, but this is a good land for this deck, so better to use it actually. And that is the deck. 